I'm not proud to admit it, but I am a little bit prejudiced of a certain type of classic car. I think we all are. And I'm gonna to be totally clear and say, I don't like MGBs. I've never liked them. I've got no interest in them at all. But suddenly something has happened to change that. And it's the guy who owns this car, the guy who owns this car, and the car specifically that's in there. Because although that's an MGB, the MGB in there just happened to win this year's British Hot Wheels Legends Tour event. And it's a beautiful piece of art, really, a piece of sculpture on wheels. And because of that, I was so fascinated, I had to come and see it and share this story on The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome. I know that you were quite surprised about winning this Hot Wheels tour that you've won in the UK. You did not expect that, did you? Not at all, no. <laughs> Absolutely not, no. And you built this car for you. You didn't build it for, like, show yeah. purposes or... Yeah, everything on the car. It's, um, it's just tuned around me as a person, really, rather than trying to do something that other people like. So the fact that other people have sort of got on board and appreciate the the you know the craftsmanship and the little bits of detail it's like it's um yeah it's overwhelming really well i need to say i i, I said it in the intro you have single-handedly made me interested in mgbs okay that's it's good it's pro <laughs> probably the what, the last classic car i would want to own mm. just because there's t there's too many of them most of them are standard but suddenly, and on, and, and on your drive, there's another MG. That's a midget, right? Uh, that's an actually an MGB Roadster. Oh, that's an MGB Roadster. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. So again, you, 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 so tell me about your MGB thing. Yeah, so growing up, my, uh, my dad had five MGBs at one point. Wow. Uh, I think it was just kind of the MX-5 of that generation where they were available and, you know, a good car you can have a bit of fun with. And that's why I wanted to feature this car because obviously... I came to know about it because of the Hot Wheels mm -hmm. connection, but I didn't realise quite how kind of off piste you'd gone with it. Yeah. But I love that about it. Yeah, off piste, I think definitely. It is off piste. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got, this is Japanese, is it not? Yeah. So you've got Japanese, there's the sort of the JDM thing with the kind of arches. The wing mounted mirrors, like the Datsun. Exactly. Yeah. And they are very sort of a Datsun esque sort of silhouette when you look at them side on. They are. Which is one of those where you see so many of the modified Datsun S30s. Yeah. But the MGBs, it's just such a similar shape, but you just don't see them modified, which always baffled me. Yeah. They're a really pretty silhouette. Well, that's an MGC bonnet, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. yeah. That's about all I know about MGBs. Yeah. I think the MGC had the massive six-cylinder motor in it. Yeah, so it needed the uh, the bulge at the front for the length, and then obviously this was put on for the carburetor being further forward. Yes. So this is now V6. Yes, correct, yep. So it's a uh, Jaguar 3-litre V6 from a 2000-ish shape S-Type. S-Type, yeah. yeah. So did you, did, did you buy a donor? S type. Yep, uh, I've what? been through a few of those. Oh god, no, I, actually, I actually really like the S type, but I know they are amazing donors. I'm not going to pretend that I knew all of the specs, but I don't need to because it's all bolted onto like like a steam engine plaque. Yeah. What have you done? Have you like printed these? Yeah, so I've done them on a the 3D printer. I've got a lot of 3D printer. Just Bloody brilliant. There. You look at this car, and when I first saw it, clearly it, it's not a car which is would win shows because of the quality of its paintwork. Definitely not. You've clearly not yeah. gone for it in terms of the sort of the, the, the paint finish. It's it's all the other details that make it fascinating. Yeah, so when I got it originally, I think you can still see in the corners, there's like a bit of, I call it Smurf Blue. Yes, um, yes. And it was just, it was a bit too, I wanted a sinister looking car. Yeah. I like dark colors that look almost black until you go under a street light and then you can see the color on a night. Yeah. Um, and the blue was just a bit too much for me at the time. Um, and I actually had it, it was kind of, all the panels were different colors and I had the two exhausts running out the side. 
and then I've made this um, single crossover trying to get some extra power from the exhaust scavenger to run the exhaust down the one side. Yeah. Um, it's like and, a Dodge Viper. Yeah, yeah. But when I did probably that, safer to drive than a Dodge Viper. Mm, well, yeah. <laughs> I speak, I speak from experience. Yeah. But when I put the exhaust down the side there, I actually like made a an effort to sort of bring the paint back and make a decent job of it. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where I use it a lot. Uh, I daily drove it in winter for a bit, which was horrific. Um, and you know things get dropped on it, and I'm I'm not really a paint person. I can't keep on top of paint, and I, I'm one of these where if I've got a stone chip, I'd want to fix it. So yeah. I just I just let them go. And so it would be a constant yeah, disappointment battle. Exactly. I can see you're a metalwork guy, judging by the horse's head, made out of horseshoes that you casually just said you did that last week. Just yeah, just a, just an evening project. That one. I um amazing. I think it's one of those things that. Uh, I struggle with I struggle sitting down. I like to be busy working with my hands and doing things. And you know, you're never gonna you're never gonna sit on your deathbed and wish you watched more TV. So if, that is you know, true. You, you've, you've got to if you want to make something or if you see something and you get inspired to do it, just do it. And you know, so. So how did you learn? Just uh, self-taught. Most of the most things like anything with the tools. Uh, I've grown up. Thankfully, my dad's always been a crafty person, and he's always. Um, He's always been working on things, making things. He does a lot of jewellery. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I picked up working on cars from him and wow. learned all the basics from him. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark, a tool which safeguards all your online data when using public Wi-Fi. Surfshark is a virtual private network, or VPN for short. And a VPN is like wearing trousers when you leave the house, really. Uh, make sure all your private stuff stays exactly that, private and secure. Well, why is that relevant to me, you ask? Well, I get the honor of seeing new cars and driving them before they're actually launched. And I have to abide by the manufacturer's launch timings, also known as an embargo. So it's important that the footage that I take on video and the pictures that I take don't get into the wrong hands when I'm sat at an airport or cafe or here in the car using public Wi-Fi. I can upload all this back to base to be edited safely. That's where Surfshark comes in. It encrypts your data and keeps you safe on any public Wi-Fi. So for security when traveling, or simply to keep me entertained by switching my country back to the UK on Netflix so I can kill my airport time or my hotel time and have my own creature comforts, Surfshark has my back. You're probably aware that I'm not a tech mad bloke, but this is genuinely very simple to set up and you can use the same account across multiple devices with very little faff. Click the link below to download the app, create a Surfshark account, and you can use the code LATEBREAK in capitals to keep your data safe and watch your favourite streaming services from anywhere in the world. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee as well, so that's one more reason to give it a try. Who would have thought a Jag S-type donor car could be so sexy? Oh, you babe. sit, these chairs are great. Sit really low. Yeah. Which I like, because a lot of old cars you, you sometimes... You sit a little bit too high on there, too much padding. Yeah. Did you make them? Yeah, so they're just uh, Sparco frames that uh, they were a bit past it. Uh, yeah. So I just uh, modified the frames and sort of made them look a little bit more aircraft. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's some copper piping on there just for a bit of detail. And then the, uh, the covers are actually just recycled uh, old jeans. Uh, Is you that know, when you Yeah, you go out into the garage and you... Uh, Get a little oil stain on one of your jeans and then I'm just cutting bits off. So they were your jeans? Yeah, these gonna... are all, all my jeans, all family that it's have not done. not charity shop stuff. jeans. Yeah. And of course you've got this tiny steering wheel on it as well. You could do with a little bit bigger really, I think, couldn't it? And it's, um, you've got it to is be, small, uh, it is small. Yeah. But dainty. Gear shift's really nice. Very it's short, it? yeah. What, it, that's like a handbrake, it looks like a handbrake. Um, yeah, similar sort of, yeah, it was just what I had lying around that I thought looked right. Almost looks sequential in a way, doesn't it? It does. See, a good thing about an MGB is, it is the right width for British back roads. Yes. It makes the road so much wider, and you can sometimes go for a drive with a much quicker car. Yeah, because you've got more road, you I, can catch up in the corners. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's why I say about so many, like, so many fast, big, modern cars, they don't really fit. Yeah. You know, so you can't enjoy them as much as you'd like to. 
It's off way. demanding and sometimes you kind of concentrating more on driving it than smiling yeah but you always feel like you've had a good time afterwards I suppose you you said you converted the back end yeah so it, on the back it's on coilovers uh, it's a four link setup yeah uh, and it's uh, basically just to get rid of the leaf springs yeah got the uh, reliant scimitar rear axle with the uh, Jaguar power lock the differential yeah oh yeah so it does have a limited slip dip. Yeah. Got the uh, Nankang and S2Rs on there as well, and they, they hook up pretty good. I was going to say, it's good. So, I mean, the, run, the, the road surface is quite bad. That's not the car's fault. The car's actually handling it really well. I'm no stranger to stiff cars, so I'm okay with that, but the seat's actually really comfortable. Yeah, it's not too bad. After a while, it does great on you. <laughs> well, anything longer than about an hour. An hour, I think, is the max, yeah. 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 <laughs> and you've changed the dash of this. Haven't yeah, you? so the dash originally had the rocker switches that came across here. Yeah, it's like a plastic binnacle that surrounds the gauges. Yeah, again, just trying to get rid of the plastic and uh, just neaten it up a little bit. The things that I don't really need, you know, get rid of interior lights, that sort of thing. Yeah, so gives it a bit more race car feel as well, I think. It does feel like a race. Have you, have you had it on a track yet? Uh, not yet. Every time I get close, something goes wrong. <laughs> no, we don't talk about that anymore. No, we're talking about that. Okay, okay. But obviously, it, it got a lot of attention at the Hot Wheels event, but it sort of acts as a quite an inspiration for a, maybe a different kind of generation of appreciation for MGs. Yeah, definitely. I think you've got to look at the MGs now, and I always think about the vintage cars. You know, if you're not if you're not careful and you don't. Um, sort of make these things appeal to younger people. Yeah. Fewer and fewer people are going to start driving them and enjoying them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the vintage cars now, they're already sort of peaked at where they're going to be price-wise. I think people have, uh, you know, the people that have grown up wanting those cars, they're, uh, they're dying. Yeah, exactly. And I think if you're not careful, cars like this, there is a lot of these. Yeah. Um, and if people don't do things with them, no, they're not going to be around, are they? There is a, uh, a shift light on the bottom of the dash, but it's not very obvious. <laughs> don't worry about hitting the limit. The limit is a bit to be broken, right? Oh, not. I think <laughs> I think this road's too. Yeah, there's too. a little uh, straighter section at the other end that you can do fit on. If it was a bit smoother, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, bouncy on here. Yeah. I think uh, it's uh, Yorkshire roads for you that one. That is British roads, full stop, right now. Yeah. Again, though, like sounds good. great with that bloody side X exhaust. Yeah, it's got a nice note to it, hasn't it? I think it's one of those you get a lot of people that, well, this car in particular, everybody thinks it's a V8. Yeah. Um, because that's what people put in them, you know, the Rover V8s. Yeah. But the, um, whenever I uh, open the bonnet, you know, people are always, oh, is it a V6? And it's, it's almost like it should have been a V8. But no. I think, personally, V8s have a little bit more of a, a higher whining sing to them. Yeah. The V8s get the verbal, but the V6, they sing a little bit better at the top end. I love the sound of a 6. Same. I, I love V8s, but I'm not like, definitely not prejudiced. Yeah. I love the 6, I think. And with the weight, you not you don't necessarily mean need the V8. I don't think you know you could always turbo it if you wanted more power. Oh hell! And these turbo well apparently. Yeah, I that was the uh, the original plan actually. But a friend of mine is just uh, he's got a uh, turbocharged Chevette, and it's um, scared me a little bit about turboing this. Uh, just a little bit 
What, because worried that I might lose the drivability for the street and my confidence with the, um, the power, so yeah, you should be able to hoof it up here a bit. Can see a bit of uh, what I'm trying to do with my own Austin Allegro project with the Honda Civic motor. I don't want it to look Honda-y. It's about trying to keep it period correct in, yeah. in a sense. I know it's not, but it's just when you look at it, you kind of got to try and like the oil cap, for instance, on there again. Yes. The use of like older materials, like metals rather than uh, plastics, wherever possible. Yeah, um, yeah it fits uh, low in there as well. Yeah, when I, uh, like I said, a lot of this was built primarily around being race sort of drift driven. So I wanted the engine to be as far back as possible, but I still wanted it to be streetable. And uh, the heater box originally sits on the top here. And I did plan on putting all that back in and I ran the exhaust out the sides, but yeah. I fell into a trap of chasing power and wanted the crossover on the exhaust for the scavenging effect so so that's where this came in yeah and then that's kind of just sat where the heater box was and you might be able to take so. the heat off that yeah that's not a bad shout actually you, yeah you some sort of heat, heat exchanger. exchanger yeah See? and i could have a copper wrapped get, around it and that would be a nice piece get actually. your steampunk on yeah, the go there yeah so i love nice got, idea i like the, that yeah. well i mean you, clearly there's yeah. enough heat coming off that oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. so it's on throttle bodies, is it? Or yeah, so again, it's a lot of recycled parts or just what I could get cheap and um, or had lying around the garage. So the, th the throttle bodies are off a Triumph Triple, uh, yep. I think, Motorcycle, uh, motorbike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's two sets of those. Yeah. Um, to put that into perspective, I think Gen V charge maybe £400 a set. And I think I paid 15 or £12 for those from an really? auto jumble. So really? it's like as much recycled stuff as i can in here really the the alternators from a renault clio it was just a friend of mine crashed one and i had it under the bench <laughs> and it's um, a, and you made your own bracketry yeah so the, originally it was kind of tucked into the wing and space is the big commodity in this engine bay with the v being so wide yeah uh, i had to reverse mount it and i've never knew if i just sp spun it on the bench with a drill to see if it would work and it seems it charges fine that's just brilliant. Um, so innovative. Yeah. The the engine's obviously S type. The sump's X type, but I've built a baffle system inside to stop oil starvation with it being front wheel drive instead of rear wheel drive sump. Yeah. Um the box is a get drag box that came with the S type, but it's a Mondeo flywheel and a Mondeo pinion in the starter. Um because I wanted to go from dual mass to single mass. Yeah. Uh, the clutch slaves, I think, for Mercedes van, Mercedes Sprinter. Yeah. Prop shafts, P38 Range Rover, rear axles, Reliance Scimitar. Uh, gives it the extra width at the back as well as the option for the uh, Jaguar Powerlock limited slip diff. Yeah. Um, front brakes, uh, Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Really? Uh, yeah. And the. I saw one of those yesterday. Oh, right, yeah. They're a nice car, right? I haven't seen one in... Yeah. Uh, two years yeah, yeah. So, the, so the rotors the discs are um uh 3000 gt and then a friend of mine donated some uh s14 uh, calipers four pot calipers for it so it's got plenty bigger brakes than uh, what's on there as standard absolutely, uh, absolutely. and then i think the mustang it's a mustang radio as somebody told me yeah um it's just a mismatch of whatever whatever i could and but that's whatever the, works that's you know? the charm though isn't it yeah. and i and i think it's perfect for I wanted to get it on the channel because it's reassuring that you know, you can have an interesting car that is is can be fast if you want it to be and definitely unique and it's not just about chucking money at it. That's it, exactly that. Yeah, 
It's about throwing time at it, I think, more than anything else. Yeah, or just mm. inspiration from other sources. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything that you haven't done yourself on this car? Uh, if I haven't done it, then uh, close friends have. Um, I've got a friend, uh, oh, the button. <laughs> what, what is that button? I just Yeah, pressed. so the button just uh, retards the ignition uh, and then uh, dumps fuel into the exhaust to make it pop and bang. <laughs> I've tried to uh, keep it streetable and horse friendly, shall we say, yeah. through the map and uh, kept the box and bangs off. But if you're going for a tunnel, it's nice to be, uh, I call it the reprobate button. It is, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah if more flowers. Not, yeah, if I've not done any work myself, it's been uh, it's been between friends, and I've got a good friend uh, Ben Woodhead that uh, he runs an engineering firm, and uh, him and his dad they're always uh, helping out, machine weird and wonderful things for me. So hang on, he's called you're called Wallhead, Wallhead, and he's called Woodhead. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's ahead round here. That's it. singing and it bites a little bit but it's um i think it helps if you're familiar to old cars and you you know if you um have you uh have you had any death threats from mgb purists oh they don't like it at <laughs> all they do not like it it's one of those cars that just triggers everybody that's a purist with uh and there's a lot of it we call them the flat cap brigade you're wearing a flat cap, yeah, are, you I, doing, are you trolling them? I'm, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but your dad's an MGB purist. Yeah, to an extent, yeah. I mean, his was slightly modified, you know, period with a wolf race wheels and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't think he's against, uh, you know, a couple of modifications. But um, more a question, why if it works, I think, yeah. So. You were right about you can short shift this and the torque just it carries you, yeah. You don't have to use the gears if you don't want, yeah. you, you really don't. That's lovely. The diff's a little bit noisy at the moment. I ran it dry by accident, uh, it's quiet a little bit, but on the list for a rebuild at some point. Winter. Yeah, that's, that's it. A, that's yeah. a good winter job, isn't it? Good Not straight section here if you want to do it. But. to find its way. It does. A little bit excessive on the camber there. But it's great because it, you know, if you just sort of let it guide its way, it'll find the fastest way through the road. Oh, it's lovely. I'm really enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, let it's it cool. sing. Let it sing. Just before we started um, filming again, you mentioned about like, I can see from your house, your garage, you're re well into reusing, repurposing stuff. Yeah. Because there's a lot of repurposed stuff on this. Yeah, yeah, wherever possible. I, uh, I try to reuse things. Just, uh, I particularly like um, steampunk sort of mechanical, we were talked about steam engines earlier, that sort of polished brass, polished copper. Yeah. Aluminium things that are generally pretty widely recycled, yeah. um, but they're just e they're easy to work with, and I kind of like the colours how they work together. Everything's yeah. I do as well. Yeah, but we also need to talk about flowers. Yeah, because at the back here you've got this amazing, and I knew this from one of the Hot Wheels judges this year, my friend Richard, who I do the podcast with. He said, "You've got to look at this MGB." I hadn't even seen your car yet. He said. The guy's got engraved flowers on the rear light clusters. I went, what? He went, yeah, yeah, but it works. And he's got flower decals inside and it's, it's just really odd, but great. I think for me, the flower things is, um, 
Uh, I've always liked my uh, I when I first got into cars, I used to like uh, American like low riders. Yeah. And I always liked the floral prints on those. And oh, like, in the metal flake and yeah, stuff, where yeah. they use the, the neck curtains. That's and... exactly how I've done a lot of this with Is the it? neck curtains. Yeah, there's always a neck curtain to hand in this garage. Um, Who would have thought it? Yeah. But it's a great way. Um, I, I can like see that, yeah. I like to get things done. And because of that, a lot of my things aren't perfect. They're not clean. But if you've got, when you lay the neck curtain over the top and you paint through it, it sort of gives it a texture, yeah. which can hide a lot of imperfections as well. Yeah. It's kind of a, a bit of a cheat, really, in that sense. But a lot of the inspiration from that comes from, from the lowrider scene. And um, I, uh, in particular, the uh, the Gypsy Rose, I'm not sure if you're familiar I with. I do know the Gypsy Rose. Yeah. I've just noticed it's a V-Reg, which means this is a was a rubber bumper Correct. late model car. Yeah. And I always say it's not it's not a shame to cut up a rubber bumper car. No, not it's not a sacred if, item, is it? No, so you've put definitely earlier, not. earlier bumpers yep. that you've obviously given the Drillium treatment to. Yeah, I ran it with the, um, the Sebring Valance on the back uh, for a while, but the um, I just always think they looked a little bit it needed something again i talk about lightweight a lot but i think for me i'm i'm a designer uh, that's what i do for my career and i like things to sort of have a i'd rather it as much as i'd rather it perform yeah i like it to look good as well and and the bumpers there you know just to to finish the, the back end off it looks weird without it in my opinion but yeah. everybody's different so it's a very curvy car and then they seem to have just squared off the spoiler which doesn't for me it just didn't flow quite, quite right and I'm, I'm not quite happy with these I'd have liked to have done something different here, but I'm not sure what yet. But you're a bloody so, tinkerer, Mike. There's always something to change. This is why it's going to be, yeah. it's, it's, it's never finished, but, you, but that's, that's okay. Because yeah. as long as you enjoy the process of it, which clearly you do, judging by the fact that he stood, and we haven't referenced this, next to a wheelie bin that happens to have an engine and, and wheels. Because I, I didn't realise that you hold a world, a, not a, a UK record for this. And so it's a Guinness world record a now Guinness for this. Guinness world record. Yeah. So... Um, I rode it in Elvington in June, and we did 55 mile an hour, which is the fastest official Guinness bin. Um, in San at Santa Pod three weeks ago, we did 61 mile an hour, but I've never had it into fifth gear. Uh, it's still got a lot more to give, but the problem is obviously it's keeping it upright. That's I was going to say it's not shaped quite right is it for aero or turning i like to call it square row dynamics it's square. <laughs> <laughs> shit me i might have to buy an mg <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say <laughs> I don't know what to say it's definitely a driver's car now though, now it's got the extra hum. I mean, they are great fun cars, but yeah. you've got, I've had a few that have just had, you know, a, a slightly hot engines. Yeah. But when you've got this much power on top, it's just, it's an absolute hoot on the back roads. Well, I really appreciate you letting me drive this thing, especially no seeing as it's become so famous so quickly. Yeah, it seems to have been that way. It's been a wild ride the last few months. It's quite humbling, actually, you know. So, well, I think you, you being away in your garage, you probably don't realise how 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 kind of inspiring that can be. Yeah, it's nice to uh, certainly nice to have the appreciation. Yeah, I think like you were saying before, though, it's I think you know this sort of car, it just goes to prove you can build something that's a little bit different and a bit and be creative, do something different, and I think. If you can inspire people to do that, well, um, you know you don't have to take your car to a uh, to a garage and let somebody else do it. Have a go at doing it yourself. I started this video with a divisive comment about the fact that I don't really like MGBs and I never really have. But then again, there's a lot of people that don't like customised cars. They're really against them. So I'm ending this video by saying. I love this MGB, I love the thoughts that Mike has put into crafting this truly one-off car, truly built not bought, and on quite a low budget. And obviously whether it wins the overall Hot Wheels Legends Tour or not, I don't know. And frankly, it doesn't matter to me whether it gets immortalised in diecast or not. The point is that it exists and it shows and inspires people. You can do whatever you want. 
with a car. It is an expressive art form. This one just happens to not just look good. It drives really, really well. It sounds amazing. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, I would love you to subscribe. We also have Late Break Show merchandise, and I'll put a link for that in the description below. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>